Hey guys and welcome back to the Row Builder YouTube channel. Today I'm not going to be building anything, instead I'm going to be showing you guys how to make GFX using Cinema 4D, Photoshop, and Roblox Studio. Now a lot of people are going to be like, hey bro can you use Blender? I, I can't, I can't do GFX in Blender guys, I'm sorry, but there is 50 billion, at least, tutorials on how to do GFX in Blender. There's not too too many with Cinema 4D, so today that's what I'm going to be doing. First things first, you want to hop into Roblox Studio, get this plugin called Load Character by Already Pro and uh you just type in the username all right so let's just go it, you don't even have to do this if you don't have any specific username in mind but just type in the username i'm gonna just do that all right and then you could just spawn r6 okay now uh this guy okay i don't think that was actually like, a legitimate person we're just gonna spawn already pro so as you can see here's the guy and uh i don't really need to do a gfx with already pro but i guess i might as well since he's here all right so here's the guy uh i did click spawn at origin which is gonna make it be right in the middle of this it will help us a ton before we get into cinema 4d if we always make sure whatever we're exporting from studio is at the center point of the map if you ever wanted to check this you could go and spawn it apart and then just set its position to zero oh whoops zero comma zero comma zero enter and as you can see this is the middle of the map so we're gonna take mr already pro and we're gonna click on export selection and it's gonna pop up our files uh which i have on the other screen i don't need everyone going through my whole computer but uh you know then you're just gonna save it any name save it somewhere that you can find it i'm just gonna call this already pro and click save now we're gonna go ahead and open up our cinema 4d uh it looks pretty daunting but odds are if you're watching this tutorial you already have cinema 4d and if you're new to it well here we go all right you're gonna click on file merge and then you're gonna go into your computer wherever you stored your file at it will be an obj file and you're just going to click open this little dialog box will pop up i always set this scale to 100 uh because you know it, it helps okay so set that to 100 and now we have our character okay now you can't see him so that's sort of a problem uh let's go ahead and fix that you just double click on this little texture down here this guy will open up and you're gonna uncheck transparency reflectance and alpha now you can see that he's all black we're gonna go to color now already pro text just click this your folder is gonna pop up again you do not need to search for it you just have to click open all right and then yes and now as you can see we have this it does look a bit blurry which isn't too too big of a deal it won't show up like that in the render but you know it's it's like that for now and if you wanted to fix this like this is bothering you or anything you could just go to editor go to text or texture preview size and go to no scaling and there we go everything is crispy clean crispy clear and everything like that now there are rigs and everything like that that you could use i don't want to use a rig in today's tutorial because i don't have the links to them so it wouldn't really help you guys out but there's plenty of rigs out there you'll just have to find them i don't have any of the links to the rigs that i have though so i can't use it because you guys it'd be harder to find all right so hopefully you understand what i'm trying to say so we won't be really posing this guy today all right at least not much i mean we could do a little bit with the arms i guess you know and, and move him like this but uh yeah there's, there's so 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 much more that you can do with a rig guys and i highly 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 recommend looking into it and and if you find one that's good definitely purchase a rig a couple bucks but a couple bucks well spent that you will be able to get back uh you know pretty easily actually with gfx so we got our dude and for today's video we're doing game icons so we're gonna click this little settings button right here and we're gonna change this right here width and height to 1000 by 1000 that's what roblox accepts for your game icons so now that we have this we're gonna go to output you guys will not have this uh, octane is a paid program it's just gonna help make things look a bit more clear but i'm gonna go ahead and use octane renderer if you don't have it go ahead and just use standard all right so that's gonna take just a little bit make sure you go into the save and go to png because you always want transparent and then check alpha channel this is what's going to give you that transparent background and just make things a lot a lot easier to work with now, since I'm using Octane, I'm going to go ahead and go into this and enable this and set these up a little higher. My samples, I set this to 3750, check alpha channel and uncheck keep environment. Now, if you don't have Octane, of course, you're not going to have to worry about any of that stuff or anything like that. But it's just what I like to do. It makes things look a lot more crisp and clear. Things will look 100% fine even if you don't have Octane. But now I'm going to open up Octane, go to my live viewer window, and this is going to kind of show us what it's going to look like when it's rendered. So that looks pretty good. You might be saying, well, that's not that great. Uh, it's not. So let me just go into my settings. I'm going to skip over this part. Well, no, because some of you might have Octane or might want to get it. So we're going to open up our settings menu right here. Change this to, our, to match our other samples, 3750, alpha, 
keep environment get those unchecked there we go and now we're going to go to objects i'm going to get an octane camera what this is going to let me do and you can do this without octane as well i believe you can do it in here um i just don't know which one it is because i've always used octane but uh yeah we have our camera so if we click on this little thing it's going to take us into the camera so let me go ahead and position that where i want it for today's render i think something like this will work and then i'm going to unclick it what this lets me do is move around freely and that camera will still be there so when i'm ready to render this camera in the perfect spot i just have to click this and boom i'm ready to render another thing we're going to add uh, i'm going to be doing this from octane but you could do it from here as well right here physical sky and then right here are all your lights uh, but i'll just be adding everything from octane but you can definitely do it from here as well so if you do have octane you're going to click on this objects go to hdri environment beautiful as you can see it brightens up everything pretty nice go to octane area light okay now if you don't have octane it'll just be the normal area light you can get from up here right here boom area light and and you'll be in business okay but i do have octane so i'm just going to use this stuff in there i'm just going to position these a very popular lighting method is like three points two in the front one in the back i'm going to hold control and then move this to duplicate it and do it again for one in the back so i have three lights and then I'm going to move one of them to the back, move it up a little bit, and rotate it 180 degrees. Make sure we grab the right axis, like that, and then a little bit at a down angle. I'm going to grab these two and make them a little bit of an inward angle, just so it's getting all of the light portrayed onto the character. And then I will click this, and we'll open up our Octane Renderer. So this is what we're looking at, okay? I know, you guys are like, bro, there's black boxes. In fact... All of these are facing the wrong way. So I need to rotate these two lights the other way. Like, I have to rotate every light 180 degrees. All right, guys. So I got my pose. I got the lights fixed up. Just had to rotate those real quick. And as you can see, it is very, very bright. And we definitely don't want that. So we're going to hold shift to click on all three of these right here. Go to power. I usually turn this anywhere from 7 to 10. I would not recommend going higher than 10, though. It just is a bit, uh, a bit much, to say the least. And then visibility. We want to make them invisible and shadow visibility out of here. And then if we go to our octane renderer, you can no longer see them. Now, everything we've done so far, you can do 100% without using octane. All right. But up next, like kind of the, the main thing that I love so much, and you can definitely do this without octane, but uh, it's probably a lot harder and I'm not sure exactly how to do it. You just want to go up to here to plugins, C4D Octane, convert materials. All right. And that's going to give you this new material. And when you pop this bad boy open, we can go right here to glossy. I usually set specular to white and then roughness to 0.5. It's going to make it so it's not as glowy, but still has a little bit of glow. I don't do too much with all the other stuff. You can. There's definitely a lot more in-depth you could do. But this is going to give us that nice rim light, as you can see. And a little bit of gloss just over the whole render. And then you just want to click on this button right here to render. All right, guys. So our render is 100% done. We're going to go ahead and click this little save button. Make sure it's PNG and click OK and find a space on our computer to save it. I just put it on my desktop, a nice easy spot to remember it. And then we're going to open up Photoshop. Now... I have my canvas size set to 1000 by 1000 already, so we're going to be A-OK. -okay. And I do have mostly everything I use right here, but I will show you how to make each thing. First things first, we need our background color, okay? So we're going to grab this little rectangle tool. We can set our fill color to anything. I'll go this nice blue and just cover this whole thing, all right? This will be our background. I'm not really going to name it because, you know, A, why not? And you can always change this color as well later on if we decide to. In here, I have everything I use. The sunburst, I never make them. I just, you know, go on Google, find a little sunburst, and there we go. The light right here, we can make just by going to our paintbrush tool, setting our hardness down quite a bit and size up a little bit, and make sure we make a new layer as well. So this, not really big enough. Let's go ahead and make it quite a bit bigger of a size. That'll work, and I will just click once. And as you can see, we have a light. If you do want to resize this, you can press Control t and drag it up. And there we go. We have a very nice light for the background. Now what we're going to do is drag and drop our file from our desktop right there. And uh, this, this isn't that great of a render, to be honest. But, you know, it's because already Pro's character is bland. All right? That, that, fight me, bro. 
<laughs> Fight me. All right, so we have the character right here. Now, I think the background, since we're going all bland-wise anyways, we might as well go bland with the background. Color overlay. And we could probably pick maybe a darker color, something like this, to kind of go with his avatar, all right? Now, notice I picked it right off of his shirt, the darker color on his shirt. And this will just kind of make everything fade together pretty nicely. The sunburst can come over a little bit, and so can the light, just so we're, like, behind him. The reason we put that light is any bit of rim light that we might have gotten from our render it just helps give a source to that light another thing i like to do first off make sure we're putting this on top of all of our layers another thing i like to do is add these little i don't know how to say the word but it's like vignette or something and it doesn't look amazing on this one because you know it's already super dark but on something like my past stuff for example i've made this icon for cupid clickers which looks fantastic okay like it's beautiful and amazing as you can see the brighter the colors it just looks quite a bit better but this is a very bland character and now that i'm thinking about it probably shouldn't have used already pro's character because it's so eh <laughs> but then you're gonna want your new icon okay or your update icon so we're gonna go over here select our color to red and then just just drag a little spot right up there and i'm gonna drag another spot like this and then Control t and kind of angle this and just put them together a little bit something like this match it up a little bit doesn't need to be absolutely perfect but it's close enough and then i'm gonna grab both of these by holding shift convert to smart object now i'm gonna grab our rectangle tool hold click and turn it to this elliptical tool and just drag across the top and do a layer via copy now i'm gonna take the color of this one with a right click go to blending options go to color overlay and we're gonna go to that same red that we were using right here but just lighten it up that's gonna give like a glow effect or like a glossy type effect and i just think it looks pretty good now we just click on our text tool click anywhere type in new or update whatever we want our text to be i usually add a little stroke to the text as well and make it white so color overlay white and then the stroke would be black Control t to resize this put it up here and there we go guys this would be our game icon now i'm not too great at making the text logos so i would definitely recommend hiring someone for that and then placing it right here guys right here your text logo it would be absolutely beautiful this could be called the bland obby okay uh best tip i could give you though use a bright character the brighter your colors the better keep in mind we're on roblox predominantly a kid's market and kids are gonna be more attracted to these brighter colors so don't use already pros character for a gfx but guys that is gonna wrap up the video i hope you have an incredible rest of your day later